always loved the landscape and always gravitated to being outdoors, painting the landscape. They, they call it plain air, plain air painting. I've been doing that for almost 30 years now. Well, this is just above the Hollywood Bowl and on Mulholland Drive. There's a nice little turn off where a lot of people park. And so this is the, sort of a nice panoramic view of the LA Basin with Hollywood and downtown LA. And that's the Hollywood Freeway, the 101. Yeah, this one, I think that I can really shoot anything. I don't feel at all that I'm limited by liking or not being able to shoot a certain type of subject. Usually when I shoot, I have a project in mind and I usually don't go out just to shoot individual shots of one item and have just a picture of that. In a case of I have a project now which is downtown at night in black and white. And what I do is go downtown Los Angeles at night and just kind of wander around on foot to find subjects that appeal to me. And I don't know what I'm going to find. I never know until I get there. The whole idea is to kind of just capture Los Angeles at night in black and white. The Los Angeles that most people don't know. What I created here in this piece entitled The Octopus and it touches on a lot of topics uh, and concerns that I have, including the current state of the banking system, the fact that there are so many people whose homes are being foreclosed. And so the octopus represents that banking system. The house itself is sort of an everyday house. People consider their homes to be, you know, a fortress, security, they always, you know, conjures up security, but it's not that secure. There are forces that are lurking. There's a tremendous number of foreclosures currently occurring, and this piece speaks to that. My work is about color, and it's about exaggerated breaststrokes. It's the force of the breaststroke moving across the canvas, gestural, it's uh, inventive, it's manipulated, it's, and sometimes it appears naive, and sometimes it feels very earth-driven, but I'm very interested in color. I'm very interested in the tactile quality of color and paint. I lived in Hollywood when I first came out here and as I would go around the neighborhoods I came across a cement truck factory and I used to see all the trucks moving in and out so one day I decided to set up my canvases and I went down there and since 19, 2008 I've been painting this particular urban setting in and out of all of the trucks moving in, the heavy equipment, watching the breaststrokes move very aggressively across the canvas, as I said, building up a lot of tonality, an awful lot of layers to show that the dynamics of the urban situation. Many of my trucks and many of the portraits appear to be almost animation of the human figure. They're very frontal, they're very up close. The dynamics almost as if they were human beings or inanimate objects and they're speaking to you of their work days, their morphing with the environment of California, with LA, and transforming into something new. My artwork is mixed media, digital. I combine traditional painting and digital photography together. And I layer in text and political stories to create kind of time capsules on canvas. This is my latest body of work. These are all photographs I took in Venice. These are Los Feliz and Hollywood Hills area. And what I do is I layer a lot of images on top of each other, kind of like a collage process. And I layer them and I paint over them and I just try to create a holographic effect. I call them mirages. There's a lot that has been talked about the difference between like the light in say Northern California versus Southern California. I don't have the answers on that. I know there, there's even books about it where they segregate the painters from Northern California with Southern, from Southern California in the plain air painting world. Yeah, I guess there's sort of a sun drenched aspect to the Southern California, you know, Los Angeles, particularly compared to say San Francisco. So this one is Fifth and Broadway. I did this just, uh, this is the last painting I did. This is last week. It's still kind of wet some of the thick areas and fifth uh, you can kind of see there and Broadway and so this is the Broadway is full of all these uh, wonderful buildings and I've heard it's the largest concentration of movie theaters in the entire world frankly that's what I heard I don't know if it's true or anyway it's I, I believe it because there's all these movie old movie palaces 
the light that hits on these buildings, this is in the late afternoon, and the light that hits on these buildings is just amazing, I love it. And then all the energy of the people coming, you know, walking and, and walking by, I love to try to capture that if I can. And as you go in the painting, I start the painting trying to deal with sort of the composition, trying to make sense of what's going on, and then things start to gel, and then that's kind of when I start getting a little more crazier with maybe the paint and the figures and stuff like that. When I'm shooting, I'm usually working on a conceptual project. It's not that I'm going out and looking for something to shoot and don't know what I'm gonna get. See, one of the great things about living in Los Angeles is that there is so much art in Los Angeles, and there is so much art being exhibited in Los Angeles and so many wonderful artists working in the area that you're constantly being exposed to both new work and old work, which always inspires you. I recently saw a show downtown of Ansel Adams, some of his really early work before he started shooting Yosemite Valley in places like this. It was in the dark room gallery downtown, and the work was phenomenal. And to look at it, and he said that he didn't like it particularly, and I looked at some of these shots and they knocked me up. I thought they were fantastic. So you're always getting exposed to new stuff, and that always inspires you. Living in Los Angeles, you do get a heightened sensibility about the need for eco-friendly art. A lot of my art touches on materials, topics that are recyclable. This is all industrial materials that I use in this piece, things that are commonly procured and, and repurposed for this particular installation. So this TV sort of picks up images that are transmitted from the octopus, and what it does is provide a sense of uncertainty, provide a sense of instability in a home that's always considered a fortress. And so people who think that their homes are, are secure and safe and sound, it's really not. As you can see, the dynamics of the light has a very interesting approach, especially when I first originally came from the East Coast. Many of our days, of course, are very dark, very ominous. Out here, we have very, very strong, very, very centralized light, and it brings out the vividness of the color across the whole entire landscape. This city has a very harsh light to it. It's a bright light, yet it's a harsh, overwhelming light. So yeah, it, it's kind of like a reflection of what's going on in my paintings. It's sort of like a blinding light, a searing sun. I see it as sort of like not a happy sun, it's a searing sun. And I kind of try to reflect that in my artwork by sort of the overlaying mirage type of effects. This is Beverly Hills. This is a, a neighborhood scene, very traditional. As it, you can see, it's, um, it has a Spanish influence. I also paint to Hancock Park. I move around the city, finding different locations. I try to find the movement of the last 30 or 40 years, sometimes nostalgia, sometimes building into it, sometimes changing uh, environments, sometimes ethnic groups moving in. You can see the whole dynamics of the urban environment changing. This is the first body of work I did when I moved down here from San Francisco. I would find shopping carts. I live in Los Feliz. I would find shopping carts in different positions on the ground, like lying down, upside down. And it had, became like personalities to me. I made up stories. They became like homeless people. I captured every single one the way it was. I didn't do anything to it. And I would document them over time. And it would always appear and reappear in the same spot on a weekly basis. Like these, I mean, I would see them one day, go back the next week, they're still there. I feel like a vampire down here. The light is searing and intense. I want to hide from the light. Up there, you're fogged in. You're very closed in. You're very encapsulated. And the light is it's not, it's not as harsh. Here, it's blinding. I have to walk around like this a lot. You know, I squint. 